Right, what is on the agenda today? Well, the Reserve Bank yesterday, the big news yesterday, Reserve Bank Governor Adrian Orr says we're going into a session uh, third quarter next year for a year. And basically he's saying the economy is in trouble as we go to the election next year with high interest rates and higher unemployment. He is calling on everyone to tighten their belts to get inflation under control including the government, which he says must uh, concentrate on better spending. And he says, all of you, stop going to the shops. Stop having nice things. We can't afford it. And he's put up the official cash cash rate by a record amount. And really, look, I don't get into the figures. All I can tell you, all you need to know is this time next year, if you've got a mortgage, your interest rate is up, is up. So that is where I, I, I guess the brunt of the pain, economic pain, is going to fall. Um, now, our guest this morning, first guest on this this morning, though we do, do we have him up yet? We don't just yet. So we, he's coming, he's on his way. Um, the New Zealand Initiative, who we speak to relatively often on the program, have pointed out a stark difference between government economists and academic economists in assessing the state of the economy and in their views on inflation. 60% of academic economic uh, economists strongly disagree uh, that the uh, Reserve Bank's inflation expectations are realistic, while about half of government economists, uh, government economists believe they are. So, look, there's always a, there is always a factor in this that a Reserve Bank governor is jawboning down economic activity so he doesn't actually have to use the tool of putting up the cash rate. So it might just be Adrian Orr is talking doom and gloom to scare you into not spending and therefore slowing down the rate of inflation and saving the economy. All a cunning, cunning plan, uh, they suggest. And I guess trying to find two economists who would actually agree on everything uh, is pretty hard. Is pretty hard. But there does seem to be, and because of the controversy around Adrian Orr, I thought this is worth looking at. I think, and we're going to be talking to the real estate industry a little bit later about what this means for house prices, which are essentially already headed south. But politically, there are massive uh, uh, implications for this. Uh, Labor is going to have to go to the election literally slap bang in the middle, according to Adrian Orr, the governor of the Reserve Bank, slap bang in the middle of a recession with unemployment climbing, cost of living high and going up, and I guess generally people feeling a bit glum bum a bit glum bum about what is uh, going on in the country. Um, I guess economic cycles, and we read about them, and business journalists and others get into them. I I have always in my life looked and said, what is the, um, what's the, uh, uh, what's the effect on me? Can I make it through? And I haven't overanalyzed, to be honest, the economy. I just hope I can make enough money to survive. But I wonder, too, maybe you need to think about this this morning. Let's say your mortgage goes up by $100 a week or $50 a week. How do you cope? What impact does that have on you and the real life that you live? The real life that you live. Can you afford to take 50 to 100 bucks a week out of your household budget? And what gives? When the Reserve Bank Governor tells you to uh, slow down and not spend so much, what gives? What is what is it that you cannot spend money on? Um, and I don't think most of us uh, walk around uh, buying caviar and champagne every week. So I'd like you to think, and during the course of the morning, maybe text me or call me, what gives in your household's budget When your mortgage goes up, how are you going to comply with uh, the fairly clear advice of the Reserve Bank Governor? It is time to tighten your belt. Can your belt get any tighter or not? That's the question I want to ask you this morning. But as I mentioned, um, some stark differences or or some, some major disagreements between government economists and, 
what we'll call academic uh, economists or real world economists maybe on the views of of inflation and the suggestion perhaps from some that Adrian Orr is jawboning up how bad recession might be so that he doesn't have to use um, the cash rate to manipulate it. Um, joining us now is Eric Crampton, um, economist from the New Zealand Initiative. Eric, how are you? Nice to have you with us. Good morning. Good to be here. Okay, we got you loud and clear. Excellent. Well, first up, this is doom and gloom from Orr. Recession from, what, June next year for a year, he says, um, and it's going to hit everyone and we've all got to spend less. Is that a reasonable uh, uh, message, do you think, Eric? Well, I'm not an economic forecaster and I don't have a DSG model in my back pocket to be doing my own forecasts on these things, but it is pretty rare to get out of bouts of really high inflation like we have been having, not just here, but globally, without having substantial contractions. Whether it winds up being four quarters or not, I'm not sure. Uh, It's also worth thinking about where the benchmark is. So right now we're in a substantially overheated economy. There is no way we would be able to to keep employment rates where they are now, just by keeping inflation around 7%. It would take continued increases in inflation to maintain these levels of employment. So a recession is just declined growth, right? So negative growth over a few quarters. It has to come down from where we are because it is overheated given the settings we've got. Uh, the bank has in unemployment rates hitting five and a half, five point seven five percent during that recession, which aren't crazy high in the grand scheme no. of things, but a lot higher than we've had recently. Okay, do you think Aura has got it wrong, or is he doing his best? And I know you've been a critic of his before, certainly a critic of his reappointment for five years. I think that they're finally starting to get serious about it. So. I guess we can still put seriousness in context. We still have inflation of about 7.2%. And if you remember that the petrol excise subsidy adds another half a point that's kind of hidden. So we're not seeing it in the CPI, but it'll come back as soon as the subsidy goes away. When does the subsidy go away for that, uh, Eric? Unless it's extended, it'll be the end of January. So mm-hmm. once that goes away, and, and it should go away because it's a it's a subsidy for road, road use. The mm. pet, Our whole system is set up so that road users basically pay their own way. They can quibble about how they quite have it set up, but that's the basic deal on it. Uh, We shouldn't be trying to subsidize that out of general tax revenues because it's not fair to investors. Yeah, okay, we digress. Um, But yes, we've digressed. Inflation is a little bit higher than the, the headlines once we remember that. The bank has been a little more sanguine about it. We were getting pretty nervous about it earlier. So in the August monetary policy statement, the Governor thought that they were fairly well advanced in their tightening cycle, and it was looking like inflation was running hotter than they were thinking. It's good now that they're taking it a little bit more seriously, and it was really needed. So a giant part of the job is just bank credibility. So if everyone expects that the bank will do what's required to get inflation back on track, then it's easier for the bank to get inflation back on track. So there is a bit of jawboning going on here, right? Well, there is, but I think that it's back. If they were giving that kind of rhetoric in the context of a half a point increase in the OCR, and without you wouldn't forward, take it seriously, and you wouldn't be taking it as seriously. They have given the three quarter point, which is a lot better, and they signaled as well that they were considering a full point. So that's suggesting that they're trying to rebuild that credibility. Yeah. All right, Eric. Will the dire predictions come true, or is it? And it's really funny when I talk to people about how these things work. It's actually creating the climate of fear that means you can get rid of what you might have been fearful of in the first place, right? Once infl- if inflation expectations do come down a lot, then wage pressure goes down, demand pressure goes down, inflation goes down, so there's less need to do the continued OCR increases. Okay. So that is part of the job, yeah. All right. Uh, do you think this redeems Adrian Orr with his critics? 
No, it's not been a very successful uh, term as governor. So after he came in, we saw the appointment of a monetary policy committee whose external members were banned from having any research interest or expertise in monetary policy, which is a bit surprising. Uh, Bob Buckle on there is good. Uh, when we surveyed the country's macroeconomists about who they thought should be on the monetary policy committee when Buckle's term was due for reappointment and Peter Harris, they strongly supported the reappointment of Bob Buckle but they wanted to see some ac actual academic macroeconomists on the Monetary Policy Committee. So just as a bit of an explanation, previously we had sort of a governor-only model where the governor would say what the OCR was going to be and there wasn't a committee that was deciding it. That shifted to a more standard committee model, which includes members from the Reserve Bank, so Adrian Orr is on there, their chief economist on there, and a couple of other people, but also some external members, which is important to avoid groupthink, to bring in external perspectives, and sometimes external expertise that the bank might not have. Unfortunately, there was a policy decision between the Reserve Bank and the Minister of Finance that nobody with an active research program in macro and monetary economics should have any role on the Monetary Policy Committee because they saw it as a conflict of interest, right. which was really odd because every other central bank has a really strong research team. They'll have external um, academic economists on who really help out. Reserve Bank of New Zealand didn't want to do that. Mm. So that's been a problem. Over the past few years as well, the bank seemed far more interested in sideshows like climate change and other sort of cultural issues in New Zealand as opposed to its core responsibility over monetary policy. All of those can be really nice and important in their own right, but they have little to do with appropriate Reserve Bank policy and are better handled by other parts of government. I hear you. I hear you, Eric. Eric, in real terms, um, this is going to hit people who have mortgages and are repaying mortgages hardest. That's, yep. that's where, where this passes on. Uh, that's a fair proportion, as I understand it, of uh, New Zealanders. They are already in a market where house prices are falling markedly across the country, markedly across the country, so on paper, they are worth, uh, worth less. Can we, or is there anywhere, a, a, and if there isn't, I'm not going to blame you, a figure for what on average, for the average Kiwi mortgage holding household, this is going to cost them extra? Well, it's going to cost a fair bit more extra. So if you've got, uh, I'll say, if you've got a $100,000 mortgage and you're paying 3% interest, well, that's $3,000 on $100,000 a year. If it goes up to 8%, well, that's 8,000, right, in interest. So um, judge for yourself how large your mortgage is and what you're currently fixed at. But and it could double. Yeah, but it well, couldn't double, could it? Yeah. That's the, oh, that, yeah. There's the principal and then the interest you pay. So your actual yes. payment won't be double. It'd just be interesting to know if anyone actually keeps an eye on what that figure is on average. Um, I'm sure those numbers exist. I'm not on top of them. Okay, all right. We might try and uh, hunt those down during... So that is where really the rubber hits the road on this, right? Well, it's not just that, right? So there is the big effect through consumer demand as households, well, get more sucked away into mm -hmm. paying off mortgages, but higher interest rates mean investment projects that would have been feasible at very low interest rates are no longer feasible because they get priced out. Your hurdle rate goes up. Your cost of capital goes up. So a lot of investment projects fail to go ahead. Uh, that won't just be on the private sector side. Some government ones also wouldn't go ahead because their cost of financing might go up. Um, it's That's the nice thing about interest rates, right? They're kind of dispersed across the whole economy as opposed to other things you might try doing, saying, well, you're not allowed to spend money on this anymore or that anymore. Interest rates find their own level and things get priced out sort of across the economy. Yeah. Uh, what happens to KiwiSaver? Someone sent me a text and what impact does high inflation and a high monetary rate have on KiwiSaver? Actually, your returns go up, don't they? Or they should? Well, it'll depend what happens with the overall stock market and how, where your funds invested. So interest rates going up here means the dollar will be declining a lot less than it has been. One of the features of the past year has been a declining New Zealand dollar where the Reserve Bank was see, seen as being weaker on inflation fighting than some of the other banks abroad. So our, our uh, exchange rate was dropping. That's started coming back up again with the Reserve Bank coming in a little bit more seriously. That means that the price of foreign assets in your KiwiSaver goes up in New Zealand dollar terms. Yeah. New Zealand dollars more. Um, so it'll depend what's happening with that, the comp composition of your portfolio, and whether we go into global recession, because global recessions also are not particularly good for stock market prices. 
All right. I'm looking for a soundbite from you. Do you think Adrian Orr is finally facing the music or doing what he order? I think he's finally started to take inflation seriously. And I hope that Minister Robertson now has some regrets about the past few years where they allowed inflation to run pretty high. And now we're stuck in a spot where the Reserve Bank is compelled to, well, and get in really tight in an election year. So it's going to be pretty tough for Robertson. So I... If there are yep. regrets anywhere, I hope it's with the Minister of Finance in letting things get to this point in lack of oversight on the board of the Reserve Bank. Yeah. Hey, thank you very much indeed, Eric, uh, as always, for your uh, analysis and your insights. That is Eric Crampton, Chief, Crampton, Chief Economist uh, for the New Zealand Initiative. And yep, uh, no doubt being in the middle of a recession is going to have some impact on Election Day, which is uh, picked to be November, around a year away. Uh, someone here just is frightened for my KiwiSaver.